All right. All right, waiting on my guest to join us here. Should be joining shortly. All right, hey fam. How you doing, my sister? I'm gonna find out why my comments, let me see. Uh -huh. Let me see. All right, waiting on my guest to show up <clears throat> and uh, hopefully he will be here. He should have the information. And I'm, I am live, so waiting on Curtis. Facebook live stream to Curtis. Come in, Curtis. Let's see if this brother is having some difficulties here. This is why I try to get things set up beforehand so these issues won't arise. I'm right here, brother. Did you click the link? There you go. All right. I got you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. What happened? What happened? It wasn't. Oh, there I am. Okay. This is uh, I, on my phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> on my phone, it was tripping. Yeah, so then I went on. Yeah, yeah. On my lap. This okay, is my yeah, lap. Yeah, phone so that way you won't have any uh, feedback on your end. Um, with that, you think the phone is better, or you think the laptop? No, no, no. This, what, you, what you have right here is good. You're making sure that you don't have you don't have both devices on. At least, oh. uh, so your phone needs to be on mute. So I need the feedback. I'll put that. I'll turn that off. All right. Gucci. All right. I think I got some <laughs> yours. Uh, let me see. I got some Kim folk is requesting me as a. Is Miss uh, let me see Tanya Overton? Uh, if you see anybody with the last name Overton, yeah. <laughs> uh, Miss Nola, she requested me, or oh, she's following me rather. That, that's my grandmother. Okay, Miss Nola. So Miss Nola's following. I think if she would like to request me, then I can I can add her because she probably won't be able to comment on the on the discussion. Um, Without yeah, they, they were saying they, they they wanted to see it, but they don't know if they can even see it. Will they, they be can see it? Yeah, they can see it because it because now it's public. So now okay. the live is public, so they'll be able to see it um, with the uh, with the uh, with the streaming. But if they're just was just following it and wanted to comment, uh, then I would need to, I would have needed to add them add them on my uh, on my list as a friend. So you can you can tell they can want to, they want to they want to come in and just uh, uh, comment. With the with the uh, with the video, they can do that as well. If not, can, they can just watch it. So, but it is live for everybody to watch. So, oh, good. All right, they they texted me. They said that they can see. Okay, they can see. Okay, so everybody. Okay, so uh, hello to the to the Overton family. Uh, <laughs> greetings to everyone. Um, uh, thank you all for for joining us this Lord's Day afternoon. Uh, I am Seiko Woods. I'm I'm here with my uh, special guest, another guest here, uh, Curtis Overton. Uh, Curtis Overton is a former, I hope I'm saying that right. You, you ain't still following Craig, are you? I don't follow them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, former former uh, G. Craig Lewis, ABC EX Ministries supporter, uh, Curtis Overton. And so uh, what the, uh, for the next few moments, we're going to uh, just have a dialogue, open dialogue discussion. There's no script. 
Uh, I want this brother, as we have, as I've done with other guests, to uh, share their story, to share their experience, because it's their experience. It is their story. And so we want to uh, provide a platform uh, for those who have been affected by uh, G. Craig Lewis, ABC, which stands for uh, Adamant Believers Council, but I call them another bad cult. That is exactly what they are. Um, or EX Ministries. So there have been people that have uh, desired to share their, their story, uh, whether in written format or even visual format. And so we want to give people the opportunity here with this ministry, that uh, that opportunity and platform to do so. But before we get into the, uh, the discussion, I just wanted to put out a couple of things. Number one, uh, if you would like to support this ministry, uh, if you would like to uh, uh, support the ministry by uh, sharing, you can do that by sharing the content, uh, sharing these videos. You can you can like them, share them with those who would need to hear and, and, and know the truth. Uh, you can do that also through uh, through uh, YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel under my name, Seiko Woods. You can do that because uh, there are people who are wanting to know the truth. Uh, God has an, he has an elect. He has a people that he is drawing and calling out for himself, and he's calling them out from all across the globe. And so if you have been delivered by those kinds of ministries, uh, ABC in particular, or EX Ministries in particular, and you know that uh, if God has called you and drew you out of that place, then he's drawing others out as well. And so our mission, our goal is to help as many people to know the truth, help as many people to find truth and help as many people to walk in the truth. John himself says, I have no greater joy than for my children to know that they are walking in the truth. It is not just you getting the information, but it's applying the information, applying the information, not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word, as James says. So uh, please support the ministry if you are able to do so um, through that, through those means uh, as well. Uh, if you'd like to support the ministry financially, you can do that. Uh, by uh, going to uh, my uh, my uh, cash app uh, and entering the name uh, dollar sign and then Seiko Woods. You can do that uh, however the, the Lord leads you to do that. We know it takes money to do ministry. We are right now uh, already um, starting up our virtual counseling uh, ministry. People have already started to sign up for that. It's, un it's unbelievable. And also through PayPal. You can also go through PayPal as well. Thank you, Lavina. I, I'm, I'm going to use Lavina as my as my spokesperson, uh, uh, Curtis. She's going to be my spokesperson, man, to help me, you know, sponsor these things, man, because I'll be forgetting that sometimes. So you can use PayPal under my name or you can use Cash App uh, under my name as well. Um, so uh, you, you, actually, you can do that as well. Also, if you'd like to support the ministry through the merchandise, as you can see right here, BCV, book, chapter, verse. We have T-shirts. We have hoodies. We have uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, merchandise, and, and and thank you those of you who have been supporting it. Uh, uh, like Sister Fam, she 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 bought up a whole bunch of stuff, uh, and those 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 hats are on the way, my sister. Those hats are on the way for my brother. Um, but uh, you want to support the ministry through the merchandise? There, you can do that as well. You can just inbox me uh, under Facebook under my name, inbox me, and we can send a catalog of all the merchandise. My lovely assistant and uh, account specialist Nyla will assist you in completing those orders and expediting your your merchandise to you uh, as soon as possible. So, without any further ado, again, this is my brother. I have not met him before. Uh, just uh, actually met him just what a, a a couple weeks ago, bro. Think think so, yeah. A couple, weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. So he reached out to me, and and so what uh what I wanted to do actually he asked to come on the just live. True. Is that true? So, That's true. <laughs> nothing. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, uh, twisted your arm. I haven't done any, uh, 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 you know, mafia style, uh, you know, Teamster Union type of thing to to have you to come here to uh, to share your story. You you came out of your own free will, your own volition, and uh, asked to uh, to share your story uh, uh, verbally, and also you had uh, shared your testimony. Uh, uh, in written format, and you and you actually left your name. You say, "Hey, man, I have no problem putting my name out there," and that's a bold move, bro. I, 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 you know, I appreciate that, dog. I appreciate those kind of people that you know say, "Hey, man, look, I, I ain't no sharing my game. I'm not running for nobody." Here, my name is Seiko Wood. My name is Curtis Overton. My name is whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, shout outs to those who, who who do that. So, Curtis, let people know a little bit about yourself. What brought you here, and uh, you know what what made you decide to share your story, bro? Right, cool. So I, I was I was up early, well, kind of early this morning, and I uh, came up with seven points that I wanted to hit. Um, sure. 
I want to ask your permission if I can hit them all. Uh, all right. Number one is the timeline. The timeline includes how I came to know G. Craig, how I found Seiko Woods, and what convinced me to discontinue following EX Ministries. So that's number one. Number two is um, G. G. Craig doesn't like singleness. Um, he makes the preference he follows the precept for others to follow. And I know we had a discussion in one of your posts about people making their preference other people's precept. So I like that. I tagged in on that one. Number three. Oh, uh, you gonna pay me for that? You, know, you gonna pay me for that? I need to remember my money for that little that little. Okay. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna get you all doing that. <laughs> Number three would be uh, my final letter to G. Craig. I, I wrote him a, um, a Facebook message and I saw his his uh, EX ministry uh, icon pop up. So that means that he read it. He didn't reply, but he did read it. It was this was about, about last week. I feel differently now than I did when I re read it. So bear with me when I when I read it to y'all. Y'all, like, why are you say that? I didn't know some things. Okay, yeah. I'm a little bit more enlightened now. But let me read my last letter to him. That's number three. Number four. Uh, can G G Craig be a Christian yet carry on the way he does? Can he be a Christian and carry on? So I'm, I, I want some book chapter verse on that. And I, I like I like how you are uh, very uh, biblical, and I love the Bible. It's, my favorite book to read. So I have some scripture on that. Uh, number five, I call it the Balaam syndrome. And I'm going to give some uh, scripture. What I believe that G. Craig is battling the Balaam syndrome. And I'm going to prove my point. You believe what you want to believe. Just bear with me. I'm going to go to the book of numbers. I'm going to read some stuff. And then you come up with your own conclusion. I believe that G. Craig has the Balaam syndrome. Number six, how bad can we make someone look Echoed from Teton Moffat. Teton Moffat was on live and he said, uh, basically, how bad can we make someone look? That's kind of like the vibe behind EX Ministries. And I can I, I, I believe that as well, uh, following him as long as I did. And then number seven, pride cometh before the fall. That's the last one. Number seven, pride cometh before the fall. I'm just going to share a little bit of that. So number one, the timeline, uh, how I came to know like a little bit about myself. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood called uh, Ellenwood, Georgia. And uh, I've been, I used to go to World Changers Christian Church, uh, Prefloor Dollar Church, uh, growing up there. I've been saved all my life. I grew up in a church since I was four years old. I was led to the salvation prayer. So I've been to churches in so many different uh, states um, in America, traveling all around, um, different conferences, a lot of different word I've heard from a lot of different pulpits. Um, I have a lot of knowledge when it comes to the things that God, uh, because I've just been in it so long, not because of uh, anything else. Um, and then, uh, so fast forwarding up until when we moved to Maryland, uh, we moved to Maryland uh, from Georgia. And um, one of my uncles is actually um, cool with G. Craig Lewis, or he was, I don't know how he is now, I haven't really spoken to him about this whole thing. But he, uh, he used to work security for G. Craig and um, it was over in my uncle's house is where I found out about G. Craig Lewis and EX Ministries and the Truth Behind Hip Hop. We were over in my uncle's house and he had one of the DVDs and he was like, hey, man. Um, now, my uncle, he had the the the, 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 the Truth Behind Hip Hop, the one that had Snoop Dogg in it, because hmm. there, there's two of them. There's, there's one that has Snoop Dogg in it. That's the uncut version. It has like the, the music video from Snoop Dogg and all that. And then there's the cut version because G. Craig got sued and he couldn't use that in the new uh, videos. So uh, I, I don't have that uh, version, but my uncle has the, the, the that version. He was like, y'all got to come over and watch it. So we was always we was over his house and he couldn't find it. So we end up watching part two okay. first. And we actually watched part two, the B-side, when uh, G. Craig plays the track backwards, Jay-Z, and it says, Murder, Murder, Jesus, 666. And I'm like 13, 14 years old. I'm bugging out. I'm like, man, this is um, this is I don't want nothing to do with uh, no secular music. I don't want nothing. To, nothing nah, I'm good. Just Jesus all day, you know. Yeah. So uh, this um, fast forward and um, just watching his videos and wanting more and more and more. And uh, actually, my church, my my older brother, he heard the first truth on hip hop in the um, teen ministry, mm -hmm. but I wasn't a teen yet. I was still like twelve. So my older brother actually heard it first at church. Yeah. Then I actually heard it at my uncle's house. 
I just fell in love with X Ministry. X Ministry. G. Craig Lewis would uh, post a blog. I read all his blogs up until probably four years ago. It's probably when I like drifted off. But up until four years ago, I was very faithful. All the blogs. I was like on air. Eh, I want all the blogs. Reading. I just wanted more and more. Started buying. I was like Christmas, birthday. Get me EX Ministries products. Get me anything he got. Yeah. So I. Man, I feel like do I have? Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. This is live, y'all. This is live. We <laughs> do y'all know how much I had. I'm not just a young gonna be like y'all got big with me, but this, this, this right here. Oh my! When y'all see this, oh my goodness! I could have had this already. I just want you to see. Y'all hear this? Y'all hear them in the background? It just remind me that stuff would be like. Be like <laughs> I, every, I mean, birthday, these are all, look at this. You see this right here? That's real, bro. That's these, real. All of these, all, <laughs> anything that brother came out with, I wanted it. I had oh. to have it. I, I had to have it. Wow. Give me, give me all the EX Ministry stuff. I want it for my birthday. There's a chosen wow. horse. I want all of it, man. Wow. All of it. This, this is years of support and ministry. I had to have it, man. It's my favorite. It's my favorite <laughs> thing to do. It's yep. not just um something I do for edification. It's like I'm I was a I was in it, man. That was my yeah. man, you know. Yeah, I feel you, bro. I hear you, bro. Jeez. I love it, man. Jeez. But it changed my it changed my character and it made me less uh cool to hang out with. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you two testimonies of uh people that I did not show the love of God to. Because of uh, me trying to be like a little G. Craig Jr. And mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, my mother, she calls me G. Craig Jr. Because I'm just, I'm going around, hey, what you listen to? Hey, turn that off. They ain't the, they, turn that off right now. Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> if yeah. it ain't gospel, I'm like, turn it off, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm going around the house, and it, if anything is not, the only, even some of the gospel people, I'm like, oh, no, 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 that she was with her on stage on the gospel. No, turn that off, too. Mm -hmm. I'm just Paranoid, just crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, one of my friends came over to my house one day. He was listening to uh, Genuine in his headphones. And I was like, hey, bro, you know, secular music, you, you disrupting the atmosphere. You're going to cause, you know, the atmosphere to be dark. And uh, you may, it may be prone for demonic uh, uh, infestation. So I need you to turn off my headphones. He was like, bro, it's in my ears. Like, leave me alone. I said, hey, man, you turn off my headphones right now, or you get out of my house. And wow. my brothers are like, whenever Kurt gets like this, we kind of like let Kurt do him because he's like super saved or whatever. Just let him whatever. And he didn't want to take the headphones out. So I went and snatched the headphones out of his ears. And that was just not God. <laughs> so I thought I was doing the Lord's work. I was like, get them. You did that to You could have caught them hands, bro. <laughs> you know, boy, get up out of here. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just terrible. Yeah. Then there was another altercation of female from my church. Uh, she was talking about the tattoos that she had and a tattoo that she wanted to get. And I was like, you know, Leviticus says no tattoos. She was like, that's Old Testament. I said, well, in the New Testament, it says that, you know, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. So don't be marking up your skin. She was like, well, there are murals in church buildings. We can have a mural on our body. I was like, listen, girl. No tattoos. And I was like just yelling and just being just yeah. not godly, just raising my voice. And I was beating my chest. And I and this is what this is when God like showed me that I was just not in him at that point. I was beating my chest, yelling at this girl, telling her that she was wrong for having a tattoo. When I beat my chest the last time, my cross from my chain fell to the uh ground. Mm. And we were outside the restaurant, CC's Pizza's all you can eat buffet. I don't know if they got them in Texas, but they had them up here in Maryland and my cross fell off and God was like, you know, uh, you, that's not the way you get a point across. Even if you think you are right about something, that's not the way to do it. Right. You know, like G Craig just had me just not right. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, and, and G Craig Lewis, he would come to town. I live in the DMV area. We call it DMV. That's DC, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah. So growing up from the age of uh, 11 to now I'm 28, we've lived in D.C., we lived in Maryland, and we lived in Virginia. Now, I currently live in Virginia, and anytime G. Craig Lewis will come to this area, 
I was there. He come to a church in D.C. I'm like, hey, we got to go. Let's go. I grabbed by everybody. And I'm telling everybody, let's go. And yeah. uh, we all jump and we go and we, we buy some some more products and we buy some more products and we, we buy some more products <laughs> and we, we just keep it going. Yeah. And uh, I got two. I got his book, the hard copy, and I got the soft copy of his book. I just everything on that site I got, you know, and yeah. he was he been preaching. I go to town and I just love it. So I'm just like a fan and he he'll uh, I followed him on on Facebook and he'll do these sermons, the podcast. I listen to all the podcasts. He had this thing called Xcast where he would interview different pastors. I listened to all of those. I just loved it. EXTV came out with T. Tom Moffat. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then it kind of drifted away and there was no explanation as to why EXTV stopped. And I was like, where's T. Tom Moffat at? Like, what's going on? That was my boy. Yeah. Uh, T. Tom Moffat goes on live like in December or something. And I'm like, whoa, T. Tom Moffat's on live? I haven't seen this dude in like a long time. I click on it and he's talking. And, he, and it was like, we're going to bring out Seiko. I'm like, who is Seiko? Like, what's <laughs> what's happening right now? <laughs> you come on there. It's, it's Teton. It's Timothy Meekins. And it's you. And y'all talking some stuff. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all talking, whoa, this don't sound. G. Craig Lewis is doing something that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> y'all are bogus. Get out of here. But I kind of believed it because Teton Moffat is my boy. If it was just you and I don't know you, Seiko, I would have been like, Seiko, you know, I don't know you, so bye. Right. But it was Teton. Yeah. And Teton brought you on, so it had credibility. So I started looking at Teton led me to you because you was on there. I looked on your your uh, Facebook and I see Mute G Craig. I'm like, he's a hater, but I said I'll entertain it. So I looked at one of the videos and I just was uh, very distraught and displeased of what I was hearing. And uh, I I reached out to you on on Messenger and I was like, hey, um, can I email you? You was like, give me my email address. You sent me some stuff and I was like. Wow, that's um, that's uh, very uh, hypocritical. Because for him to be so hard on people, and for him to have that kind of stuff going on, I'm like, how you preach so hard on people to live to a certain standard that you yourself are not living to? Right. So I just, I just had to. Uh, I couldn't follow a ministry that was in hypocrisy. So I had to unfollow him on the uh, Facebook. Wow. So that's uh, I mean, I just love them. And then I found you. So that's number one. That's how I um, I found you. And I found some appalling discoveries that had me um, unfollow him on uh, social media. Sure. And then um, uh, do you want to interject? No, no. You go, go ahead. Get your talk. I've been talking a while. All right. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, want, I want to make sure because I know you I know you may be limited, limited for time, but I want those seven points to be given out. So that way people can know your reasons why you're here and what you're doing. And uh, and so that way you can have your thoughts, you know, clear up. And, and then we'll 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 answer some questions in the chat because there are some people in the chat that already have some questions. Uh, being okay. Right. okay. Yeah, you so, good, bro. Yeah, you good. You good. All right. And I don't uh, I don't go to work till three thirty my time, so it's two thirty okay. your time. I got a little extra time. I live close to work too. Okay. And I'm late for this. And I was like, <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Number two. Number two. Is uh, G doesn't like singleness. He makes the preference. He follows the precept for others to follow. And um, the 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 whole singleness thing. I remember reading because um, I read the Bible like all the time. Mm-hmm. And I remember reading First Corinthians seven, and I was like, um, Paul is very clear about you know single people like him, and it is okay to be single. So why is he Craig so hard, almost like making it a sin? If you're single and saved, and he actually made a DVD called uh, "Single, Saved, and Content," mm-hmm. um, and it was a good DVD. And then he made like part two, and he kind of like changed some things. And I'm like, on part one, you was like it was okay, and then like like later, you're like saying it's not okay no more. So I'm just, like somewhere down the li- line, his like philosophy changed a little bit. But I just want to give some book chapter verse. On uh, first on, on his singleness argument, sure. Book First Corinthians chapter seven verse seven, it reads: For I would that all men, even <clears throat> I were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. Verse eight: I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, 
it is good for them if they abide even as I. So unmarried people and widows, y'all can be single like me. Verse nine. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. If you can't contain, then go ahead and get married, you know. Verse 25. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment. So even Apostle Paul is not even commanding his point of view. He's like, I'm not even, this is not even a commandment, but this, this, from my experience, here you go. And he's the Apostle Paul. Like G. Craig makes it seem like it's Bible when he come out. But this right. Apostle Paul is like, bruh, this is not commandment, but here you go. And he says, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Verse 26. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man to be. <clears throat> and then verse uh, 27. Thou... Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. So if you're single, you don't have to seek marriage. If you're married, you don't have to seek being single. And then verse 28, but, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. And then verse 32, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he sh may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Right. So single people have more time with God. They don't have to, a, a wife or a spouse to deal with. They're like I can pray all day and God is like pleased with that. But if you're married, God wants you to take care of that spouse. Amen. <laughs> you know, that, that honors him. Uh, verse 34, there is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit, but she that is married care for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Verse 35, and this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, <clears throat> but for thou... No, but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So if you're, you're married, you might have distractions. But if you're single, you, you can be without that. Verse 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will and hath so decreed in his heart, that he will keep his version doeth well. So you want to be a version, you do well. Verse 38. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, mm -hmm. but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. He even saying it's better to not even be married. And in the last verse, verse 40, but she is happier if she so abide after my judgment. And I think also that I have the spirit of God. She's, she's happier being single. This whole argument, uh, first Corinthians chapter seven, just like, Genshu. Just, <laughs> you know, like what did he read this? Ain't it amazing though, Kurt, when, when you just let the word of God speak instead of man speaking for the word of God. Exactly. And then you blew me away. I didn't even know this was in the Bible, bro. You, you posted this on your, um, you posted first Corinthians chapter nine, verse five on one of your, uh, comments or something. And I read that bad boy, and my mind was blown. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5 reads, Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Apostle Paul is saying that as other apostles, can I not take a wife? If Paul is a eunuch, how are you gonna take a wife? Thank you. He just said he could take a wife in, in first Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5. You Did, what? Then you hit a crickets. Then you hit crickets on the back of that. And you're just, just crickets, right? I, I, I was like, whoa. I read that. I was like, just the word of God speak instead of man speaking for the word of God. Some good word. That's some good word. And then number three, this is my final letter to G. Craig Lewis. This was about a week ago. So y'all bear with me. So I was like, I said, Pastor G, I love you <clears throat> and I care about you. And that's the truth. I said, you've helped me and thousands like me to become strong in Christ. 
So I'm not throwing you away like others are doing. That's fickle, in my opinion. I am stepping away and evaluating things until clarity is presented. That's all. I'm not messaging you as if you care if I'm your real friend or not, or if you need my support, because I know you don't. We are to follow Christ no matter who is following with us. So numbers don't move us. I don't know if you believe me or not, but I really do appreciate you for all you've done for me. I mean that. I never throw your message away because to do that would be to throw away the gospel. I admit, <clears throat> I don't agree with all you teach, but what has helped me has helped me greatly. And in greatly, I wrote all caps and with an exclamation point at the end. And I'll never forget it. I'm praying for you, your family, and your ministry God has placed in your care. Love your little brother in Christ, Curtis. So I wrote that last week. <clears throat> then I saw some other stuff. And then I was like, well, I, I can't see that uh, a, a Christian pastor displaying the kind of behavior Pastor G. Craig Lewis is displaying. So I don't even know if I can call him my brother in Christ because brother in Christ means you Christ-like and I'm not seeing benevolence in the EX ministries. So I couldn't even, I'm trying to be as nice as I can, but I'm like, it is untrue to the word of God for me to even do that. Right. And I was like toiling with stuff and I, I was going through the scriptures and praying because I really, I'm the type of person, I don't unfriend people on Facebook. I don't block people. I'm like, I want to play in the sandbox with you. Let's hold hands with, uh, I'm trying to get T-Time Moffitt and, and EX, uh, G. Craig Lewis and Seiko Woods and Timothy Meekins and Will Ford. I want us all to just hug and just be, I just want a big old family. You know, I just love everybody. I don't want discord and I don't like people separating. Like, don't, come on, let's play in the sandbox with me, man. Play in the sandbox with me. I want to play with you. Be yeah. your friend, you know? I don't want, yeah. Right. I don't like separation and stuff. But I grew up like, because I'm the middle brother of three brothers. Okay. And when my older brother would be like, okay, he don't agree with what I'm doing. If we're playing with toys or something, I'd be like, no, come back and play with me. I'll I'll conform to how you want to play with the men. So I'm always like that. I want to play. I want to be everybody together. So it's just, it was really hard that, you know, I had to separate. Because, yeah. I mean, look at all this stuff, man. It's my whole world. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that brings me to number four. Can G be a Christian pastor yet carry on the way he does? And I have uh, two Bible verses here. First one is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse one, though I speak with the tongues of men and, and of angels and have not charity, that's agape love, God's love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Verse two, mm. and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Yeah. Uh, so even because G. Craig Lewis, I was listening to his even his last podcast, there was truth in there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, well, this is some good words. So how is he how is he so dark and evil? And he's telling the truth. And then I read this and it's like, God, like, if you don't have love, I don't care about none of that. Right. <laughs> like you can yeah. you can do whatever. You don't yeah. got the love of God. It don't matter. Right. It don't matter. Right. And then uh, first Timothy, chapter three, verse two reads a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior given to hospitality apt to teach. Uh, so given to hospitality, if we ask uh, Delilah Mosley, is G. Craig Lewis hospitable? She would say no. If we ask Moses Dolo, is G. Craig Lewis hospitable? He would say no. If we ask uh, Dale Best, is G. Craig Lewis hospitable? He would say no. And the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. So uh, we got all these accounts of people who have been put out the church? That's not just hospitable. How hospitable. I want you to be welcome in my house. You know, right. th what kind of hospitable person puts somebody outside their home? Right. Just like just like Ariel uh, yesterday, 
Told her to go home. Exactly. I mean, Even how, Ariel. How's that hospitality? Yeah. No hospitality. So uh, he's disqualified to preach the gospel according to the Bible I read because you can't be doing people like that. <laughs> you got to check yourself, man. And I was down that road. I would have been just like him, just totally messed up because I'm thinking that he that he knows God. I, I saw the first two part hip hop and he cast 32 demons out that boy. And he did all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, oh, this dude is legit. Whatever he said is, is true. Yeah. 42. Whatever he said is, is on point. Let's say it again. 42, he said. 42. Oh, 42. 42. 42. 42. Can't find him anywhere. I mean, you know, he's like, I could probably find Wes Waldo, but didn't know what I could find. Uh, <laughs> come to me bad, dude. But anyway, but uh, continue. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just blown away. He has so many different uh, stories about the supernatural that just had me like, okay, like, yeah. And then I just kind of like uh, allowed him to say whatever he wanted, even if, even though it was not God, because he was God over here. So maybe he's God over here. Maybe yeah. I'm missing something. Maybe something wrong with me. Yeah. No. Uh, number five. Oh, this is my favorite part right here. The Balaam syndrome. Now y'all going y'all gonna be like, oh, what is that? Look, look at this right here. This is some deep stuff. I was doing some Bible study and I was like, I think this correlates with what I'm going through right now. The book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse 12 reads, And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning. And said unto the princes of Balak, get you into your land for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. This is uh, in the book of Numbers. The children of Israel have grown to a large number. And uh, Balak, the king of Moab, is bugging out saying, whoa, there's a lot of them. We got to do war with them. I'm going to need the prophet of God to speak a bad word over the Israelites so that we can conquer them in battle. So he goes to uh, Balaam and says, hey, I pray thee, speak a bad word over these people. So when we fight them in battle, we'll win because there's a lot of them and I'm shook right now. So then here we go in Numbers chapter 24, verse two, it says, and Balaam lifted up his eyes and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the spirit of God came upon him. Now, this, this gives significance to Balaam and his ministry because the spirit of God don't just come upon anybody. I believe that Balaam was chosen of God. I believe that Balaam was a true prophet. I believe that Balaam had some good word. And I believe that G. Craig is in the same boat because uh, some of these th things in here, it ain't all trash. I've read some of this stuff in here. I've actually applied some of the stuff in this very DVD. This is actually my favorite DVD. The, I did the rice experiment. I've, I've done some stuff. I've, I've seen some stuff. So some stuff is legit. I've proven the Bible says First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, prove all things so fast. That was good. Prove it. Right. It's so fast to it. So I've proven some stuff. I'm not, it's not all right. trash. True, true. So uh, Balaam, he was, the spirit of the Lord was coming upon him. Here we go. Verse 10, Numbers chapter 24, it says, and Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies. And behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. So uh, Balak and uh, Balaam go to the mountain and they see the people and three different times. Balaam is like curse them. And then Balaam turns around and blesses them. And he and he follows God. God says, don't speak an ill word against these people. These are my people. I want you to bless them. And Balaam blessed them all three times. And then Balak is like very upset. And in verse 12, Numbers chapter 24, verse 12, it, it reads, And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak, this verse 13, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or or bad of mine own mind, but what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And he's like, all the silver and the gold, big house, it don't matter to me. And I believe that's probably the heart of G. Craig in his early days. 
because he come from a street preacher. He didn't really care about the money. But once you got a couple million dollars and you sit in large, your heart can be more prone to change. And I believe that's what happened to Balaam. And I believe that's what happened to G. Craig Lewis as well. But we go to Numbers chapter 31, verse 8. Now, this is an excerpt from uh, Scripture Post number 2241. I titled it, titled it Balaam's Demise. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I post scriptures on uh, Facebook every day. I've been doing so consecutively for the past almost eight years every day. It would be eight years this year. Uh, so this is 2,241. This is like 400 posts ago, 400 days ago when I, because I'm on 2,600 or something right now. But this is that scripture. I excerpted this from that scripture post, 2,241, Balaam's Demise. And I went to Numbers chapter 31, verse 8. And this is this is the demise of Balaam right here. Verse eight of Numbers chapter 31. It reads, and they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi and Rechem and Zer and Hur and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam, also the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. How Balaam get caught up in the mix? Oh, am I cut off? No, what is this? Can y'all see? Can I, I hear you? Can you see me? Uh, you just froze up, but I can I can hear you. Okay, I hear myself. It's a green screen. Yes, yeah, a green screen, but that, that must be on your end because I can I can hear you fine. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, um, I don't know what's going on now. Everything's getting good, and now this. But I mean, I I can hear you. I'm not sure. Did your screen just just uh? Just go blank or not. Um, Should I try to rejoin the broadcast? Uh, if you want to try to do that, you can. That's fine. Or okay. if you, you, are, you want to use a different device, it's up to you, however you want to do that. But yeah, but you, you still you still can be heard right now. So you, you're, you're fine on my end. Okay. Let me see. Did you hit something by accident while you were talking or? No, I didn't. I didn't think I was getting excited, but I don't think I did. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dang, it's still green. Yeah, it's still green. I'm still seeing you here on the. Uh, OK, let me try this other one here. Let me see. Device is not connected. OK, let me try to add you on this one. If I can see a face. Let's see. OK, nothing on that one. Nothing on that one is black. Okay, I just I just kicked that one off. So um, okay, but the audio is fine, but the but the video is not. All right, audio is fine, but the video is not. Maybe it'll come back on. Uh, but if you want to continue on, go right ahead. But um, let, let's see let's see what what happens. But I can still we can still hear you fine. Okay, cool. I'll try uh I'll try my phone. Okay. Real quick. And then if that don't work, then I'll just continue talking. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Bear with us, people. This is just getting good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got you right here. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna kick the other one out. I'm gonna add you on this one here. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay, there we go. That's good. All right. Yep. Yep, yep, there you are. All right. Cool. Awesome. This is my phone. Okay. All right. So I'm going to back to my notes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Get you set up. Get you set up. Okay. I think I was on uh no, oh yeah. This number 31. Number 31. Number, number 30, 31. Yep. Oh yeah, they killed they killed they killed Balaam. So I'm like, okay, how did Balaam die? I'm like Pick up a little bit. Turn your volume up. Oh. Uh, Hello? Good. Okay, now fix it. Yeah, fix your screen again. Okay. Just make sure your volume was good. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, try it again. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Are we Gucci? Yeah, go ahead. You cool. All right, so yeah, he, so he died, and I'm bugging out. I'm like, why, why did my man die like that? I thought he had the spirit of the Lord upon him. How can somebody with the spirit of the Lord perish? That doesn't 
you know, really compute well with my soul right now. So then I read uh, Second Peter chapter two, Thank you. 15, and it gives me a little bit more insight on what's going on. And Second Peter chapter two, verse 15 reads, which have forsaken the right way, the right way, uh oh, forsaken, mm -hmm. oh, oh, so they used to be with the right way. Now they, they turn their back on it. Oh, right. what, what happened here? It says, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bazor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He loved the wages. He, he told the king that he ain't want no silver or gold. Now he loves the wages of, of unrighteousness. And in verse 16, now I'm not cursing, but King James Version right. says that dumb <laughs> means mute and ass means donkey. Okay, so that right. ain't nobody, nobody can say no swear word. Right. But verse uh, 16 reads, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. And then uh, I, I, just my little excerpt I wrote, I said, uh, Balaam was a prophet. The story of how his donkey supernaturally spoke to him in human language can be found in Numbers chapter 22. Um, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 15 through 16 tells us that Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness, wages that had him slain with the five wealthy kings of Midian by the hands of the Israelites in Numbers chapter 31 verse 8. Even men close in relationship with the Lord can fall into temptation and right into ruin. And uh, I put Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 here, very familiar uh, passage. 21 through 23, it reads, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. He cast out 42 devils, uh, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. in thy name uh, done many wonderful works. And uh, when will I profess unto them? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, casting out devils and doing all that good stuff, it, it don't matter if, you, if you're not following God, then it doesn't doesn't matter just like in first corinthians chapter 13 we don't have the love of god he don't he don't care about that so then when add, yeah and let me add another verse i'm not sure if you if you if you if you cited this one but in ezekiel 18 mm -hmm. in ezekiel 18 uh god deals with he talks to israel about uh how people uh how the israelites say man lord this is this ain't right how 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 the how the you know the children eating sour grace in the in the in the and the father's teeth are, or, the, or the father eating sour grapes rather than the children's teeth are set on edge. In other words, why are we paying for something that our fathers did? And, and God, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Let me let me help you understand something. Every man will 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 be held accountable for what they do. The sins of the of the of the of the father are not going to be passed down to the son. Each man will be judged for what he does. And so so God gives a scenario uh, of two uh, two uh, two types of scenarios. One what a person does does right. And, and 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 God says if he does right he'll live if he does wrong he won't live. What about a person who does who does wrong but then he starts to live right? God says okay I'm, I'll, I'll deal with that I'll bless him. He said but what about the person who does right but then they they end up doing wrong? What happens to them? So in verse twenty four of Ezekiel eighteen I read this. He says but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness commits iniquity iniquity and does according to all the abominations not just sins abominations. That's a higher level of wickedness. There's one thing when we just sin and we just do wrong. God says there's some sins that I hate, that I detest, that I abominate. Verse 8, verse 24 of, of Ezekiel 18 says, and he does according to all the wicked man does. Will he live? So the rhetorical answer to that question is no, he won't. He says all his righteous deeds, notice all his righteous deeds, which he has done will not be remembered for his treachery, which he has committed, and his sin, which he has committed, for them he will die. God says, I don't care what you do. I don't care all of the, the so-called miracles that you may perform. I don't care how many people may have gotten saved, got delivered, and all this other kind of stuff. He said, if you're living it the way of the wicked person, I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to judge you. And everything that you may have done that was good, God says, you get no credit for that because it's, it's, it's an abomination, how you live, how you carry yourself. 
you made my name uh, look bad. And this is, let me just add one point. We think sometimes that uh, taking God's name in vain just means adding a cuss word behind the quote unquote name of God. It's more than that. It's much, much more than that. We take God's name in vain anytime we misrepresent him because we carry the name. We are Christians. We have been born again. So when we go out into this world being salt and light and we are not illuminating ourselves, being as bright as God has made us to be, or we're not being salt or change agents that way. In other words, affecting the very environment that we interact with. God says we're taking his name in vain. We're misrepresenting him. So it's much more deeper than what we just say, adding a cuss word to his name. So I want to just put that part uh, part out there. Amen. So true. So true. And then uh, part six, I mean, yeah, point six of seven. Um, how bad can we make someone look? Um, and in parentheses, echoed from uh, Teton Moffat. Uh, Teton Moffat came on live and he was talking about um, some of the videos that they've done. He's done with G. Craig Lewis. And then he, he, he felt like what they were doing was, wow, how bad can we make somebody look? Um, not so much as, you know, can we get people saved? Are we winning the loss? Are we doing ministry right now? It's like we're just attacking people. And um, I just, I just want to make one point. And people who follow G. Craig Lewis and watch all these videos, you'll see how he just be going in on people for no reason. And it's like the point, what is the point? You just like have a vendetta against Kurt Franklin or something. Uh, <laughs> like we get Kirk Franklin be mixing the sacred with the profane. Okay. But by the time you going so far on him talking about his little bird chest and his little this and that going in for no reason, like what does that have to do with the gospel? You know, just show me the book chapter verse and we'd be good. Right. So, um, I, I recall, I'm just going to just share one. Sure. He Craig Lewis, um, he unfairly picked on Kirk Franklin. He was like, um, this is, this is the way he said it. And I was bugging out because I think it was on an EX cast a long time ago. And G. Craig, this G. Craig was saying, I saw uh, Kurt Franklin uh, shirtless, body all greased up, all, all uh, sensual and lascivious. What kind of gospel artist uh, has his shirt off showing his body to people? Uh, how, how dare he do this? So then he said, it's on his new album. So I look it up, I Google it. And it's like, uh, I think it's the Kurt Franklin fight of my life album and he's in a boxing ring right i'm like that's unfair to say that he's trying to be sensual what 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 boxes box with their shirts on that's right not, that's not fair so I, I i i love g craig but i was like bro you tripping right you tripping to pick on this man for not having a shirt on in a boxing he's he's boxing right now right i mean come on, that's, i just felt that that was very unfair and there are many scenarios like that yeah, where and make them look real, real, real crazy. Right. And they're not doing nothing crazy. So I just don't like, I don't like stuff like that. That, yeah. that, that bothered me. And then, I, <laughs> and then point seven, the last one, uh, pride coming before the fall. Um, 2019, uh, I, I unliked uh, EX Ministries in December 2019. But prior to that, T. Craig Lewis would like grab his smartphone and he'll just go on these like, little mini rants kind of and he'll be like just talking about um kanye west or some anybody but he'll grab the phone with pride and he'll say like um i told y'all years and years ago i tried to tell y'all that this will come to fruition but now we're seeing the manifestation of uh uh kanye west doing this and that or he'll be like i told i told tried to tell y'all a long time ago that this will happen and he'll start the video like out like that i told mm -hmm. you so I told mm -hmm. you. like um like that that didn't sit well with me it felt like it was pride mm -hmm. to uh begin your sentence like i told you and i've been doing this for this long and back in 2000 i did this and this and that and i and i and i and i and i and it was like christ was getting lost and it was like craig was getting heightened and i just felt that unattractive so that that was the last point that's my seven points and now i'm I'm ready to move to the next thing. All right. So here's the question. Some people have some questions right now. And I'll just uh, knock these out in the chat. Here's the first one. You can see that. Can you see it on the screen? Oh, what am I doing with the DVDs? <laughs> Are you throwing them away? <laughs> That's no question. <laughs> I haven't thrown mine away. I, I don't plan on throwing mine away. I'm, I'm going to keep mine for research purposes. That, that's just me. Um, I, I keep mine for research purposes um, for those who may want to have receipts on, on things that he said. So. Others may have thrown theirs away, and I can understand that, you know, to each his own. But uh, that was the question that was raised to you. 
Okay, yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna throw them away unless I feel led to. I don't feel uh led to that because I believe that there is um some benefit in, in some of them. I believe like Balaam's prophecy when he said he said to right. uh good to the children of Israel, we're not gonna throw Balaam's prophecy away. And I believe that Craig was had the spirit of the Lord in some parts of his ministry. Right. So he throw some of that away. But and, some and, of his other stuff, we'll throw that away. Right. And I, and I and let me, let's let's give a New Testament reference to this as well, too. You know, Titus, uh, uh Paul writes to Titus in chapter one, and I I'll just read this for those who may want to uh uh you know reference this as well. And and it and it and it, and it highlights or you know ties in and correlates with uh first Thessalonians 5 21 that you mentioned earlier. But Paul says this in his writing to uh, to Titus. Uh, he says in verse ten, I decided there verse ten. He gives he gives the qualifications actually for for bishops, pastors, elders in verses five through nine in Titus chapter one, and then he gives the explanation and the reasons why these qualifications must be seen and 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 characteristics must be seen in the life of a man who desires to lead God's church. And he says here's the reason why: for there are many rebellious men, empty talkers, and deceivers especially those of the circumcision who must be silenced. This is where I got the whole mute G Craig from, right? Who must be silent. That word silence in the Greek means to mute, to muzzle, to muzzle like a, a, a rabbit animal, a dog or a, a beast. You muzzle them from type, trying to do harm or devouring something or keeping them from eating something. Then he says, who must be silenced. Why? Because they're upsetting whole families, teaching things they should not teach. And here's a motivation behind it for the sake of money, sordid gain. Verse 12 says, one of them, one of themselves, a prophet of their own said. So now Paul is referring to an unsaved individual. Paul is referring to Epimenides. This is the same Epimenides as that, that Paul references in Acts 17. He references Ep Epimenides and says, for, it, uh, for, uh, for we are his offspring. That's what Epimenides was. He was a, he was a pagan philosopher. And he says in verse 12, one of themselves, a prophet, of their own said, here's the quote that, that, that Paul uses that is in sacred holy scripture. Paul takes a, a an unbeliever statement and by the Holy Spirit super superintending it and injects it and inserts it into the scriptures. He says this in verse in verse 12. He says, quote, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. And then then Paul goes and dig, he digs deeper in and says, <laughs> This statement is true. <laughs> this statement, he says, is true. For this cause, rebuke, rebuke them severely or reprove them severely that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. So Paul cites a pagan philosopher, an unbeliever, a person who's not saved. And he says that what this person said is true. So we can take things that are true First Thessalonians 5, 21, 22, it says we're, we're, to, we're to test all things, hold fast to that which is good or true. And then it says abstain from every form of evil. So there, there's, this, there's this balance that we must that we must adhere to. Now, again, I'm not telling anyone to, to keep anything. Don't go against your conscience. But I'll tell you this. Excuse me. Your, your conscience is not to inform scripture. Scripture is to inform the conscience. Amen. Because it's, it's through the it's through the conscience that we 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 make decisions what's right and wrong. But well, then how do we know what's right and wrong? We we must know what's right and wrong based on what the Word of God says. Because something we may think are right, God says it's wrong, and then things that we think are wrong, God says no, it's 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 right. So we have to inform the conscience by the canon of Scripture. We don't inform the canon of Scripture by our conscience. So just wanted to to put that out there. So true. So that was the question with that one. Um, let me ask you this question. So what, what are your thoughts now about, about, about Craig, about George? I mean, you know, you, you here you are. I mean, you got the DVDs, you, 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 how long, when did you start supporting? When did you start supporting G Craig? How old were you then? <laughs> 14. And how old are you now, sir? 28. 28. So 14 years a slave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 12 years we had two more years to that joint so <laughs> so 14 years you've been you was an avid how much money do you think you may have spent 
you know, including DVDs, traveling. I mean, did you? Did you oh, oh, yeah. I mean, if you had, if you had to put a, t- a total to that, how much do you think you may have spent, man? Mm, maybe four racks. Gee, just like that. Yeah, because like when he would come to town, I would give like twenty, thirty dollars in the you know the offering, whatever you know, the honorarium or whatever. Uh, let's raise the offering, and on top of that, I'm buying merchandise. And sometimes it's just like you know, you just bless the man. You don't want that in return. You just hey man, you just bless me. Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sean made the statement. I put this on the screen. Sean said this: just because he researched some factual information doesn't make him a man of God. That rice experiment is on YouTube. Ain't that something? You're right. It is on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> so, so notice. So notice. So let me ask you this question too, Kirk. Does have you recall any any time where where Craig or George would make statements, do research, and give credit? To the research that he cited it from. Now that's that. I now you're right about. I don't like. I don't like stuff like like plagiarism type stuff. I don't yeah, like Bible, Bible call it stealing. The Bible calls stealing. That's what it's called stealing. He, he, <laughs> he do be tripping sometimes. I I mean people have um given him stuff. My my mother has even uh given him some material that I've seen him use like a uh, spirit soul and body stuff. Uh, I I can't really prove it if. If he uh, he could have got it from a different spirit, soul, and body book, but my mom is heavy in the spirit, soul, and body, and she sold it to him like, "Hey, read this, G. Craig. Uh, read this." Not really trying to um, tell him that he's missing something. Trying to be nice about it. Yeah, you know, hear uh, some of his messages, and she'll be like, "He a little off on this. He needs to read this." But she don't she don't say it like that. She's nice. She's like, "Just read this. It'll it'll bless you." Mm-hmm. And then later, I'll you know see one of his PDFs and I'll see the spirit, soul, and body thing look kind of similar to what my mom does. Cause my mom has a spirit, soul, and body ministry and he didn't shout out Tanya Overton or anything like that. So uh, he do be tripping sometimes with the, uh, you know, using people's stuff and not really giving them credit. So, yeah. Uh, so here's, here's, here's another question. Um, and I, I, I'll just say this before I put the other question up. I, there, there have been people who have approached me that said that they that they've given him information or they they they, they he was taking their books and he he's uh he's plagiarized he stole their quotes and made it and made it his own I and I have that. I have the evidence of that so they're 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 as a matter of fact one of the people uh and I'm, I'm trying to remember her name and maybe if I remember that I'll, I'll mention it here but uh she reached out to me and uh and and told me that gave me the information gave me the book that she wrote and uh and he stole her he stole her work stole her work so so the bible talks about uh stealing that's the eighth commandment by the way uh paul says let him who stole steal no more rather let him labor with his own hands in other words do your own work uh stop taking credit for somebody else's intellectual property or credit for other people's work and making it your own because you're just too lazy or because you know you want to uh sensationalize something and so when you do it it sounds deeper to you um, God, God called that stealing. And so this man, I believe, is disqualified. He has never been qualified to be a pastor based on the qualifications of an elder uh, in the first place. But because uh, because of the demographic that makes up uh, his, his ministry, that make up his church, a lot of biblically illiterate people, a lot of gullible people, a lot of people who have not uh, been Bereans comprised of that, of that, of that place. And now we have the result of a, a spiritual chaos and, and people are now being um, whose lives have been being destroyed. Marriages have now either have been destroyed or being disrupted. Um, uh, people are, are under, you know, uh, depression. Some people uh, contemplated suicide. Some people are seeing therapists. Some people are questioning whether or not they're saved. All of this is because, Kurt, all of this is because, bro, um, because of bad doctrine. So so if anything, in light of all of this, I believe doctrine matters. Biblical doctrine matters. Uh, we, we can we can downplay uh, we can downplay you know preaching all we want to, but it's what if what is being preached is not Christ and him crucified, what is not being preached is the biblical 
uh, uh, and Paul even said himself, he said, I did not shrink back in, 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 in declaring to you in Acts 20, the whole council, notice, the whole council of God. It's not, listen, it's not just the gospel that we preach, but we're to preach what Jesus taught. He says, teaching them to observe, he didn't just say the gospel, he said, all that I have commanded you, right? So it's everything that's in the, in the word of God that we are to preach and teach. So when you, when you, when you get, when you come into the quote unquote kingdom through hip hop, there's going to be hip hop that keeps you. Hip hop don't save anybody. What, what I, what I've observed and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I've observed a works based salvation, which is not salvation at all. Uh, when you're, when you're telling people to do, 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 and not, and not pointing them to Christ, then what are you giving them is works. And then it's by their works that they're saying that they're saved other than the finished work of Christ that saves and that produces good works. That's the issue. And I believe that the problem that needs to be clarified here. And that's why a lot of people have uh, have have had their have had their faith shattered, faith broken, shaken, uh, because it has not been placed on a biblical foundation. And it's all about the grace of God, man, that, you know, a lot of people that have left and are leaving. Um that they're they're not they're not abandoning the faith so far to my knowledge they haven't done that yet so what what kept you uh say what kept you what kept you from falling away i mean what you mean you do you using it for 14 years i mean you got the dvds you, you followed him everywhere you went he you, matter of fact in, in your in your conversation with me you knew g g credit he called you he called you uh what did he, what did he call you what was his name he called you kurt <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah, he. Whenever I would go and see him, uh, I would see him so often because he had so many engagements. And if it was out of town, there was no thing for me to drive out of town. One time, we, me, my mother, my brother, and cousins, we drove from Washington D.C. to Washington State to see him because it, it was on my birthday, August twenty sixth. He was had a, a engagement. I was like, oh, that's the perfect birthday gift. I'm gonna see my man. And when this dude is like a mentor a spiritual mentor in your faith he developed some of the things he helped you out it's 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 very very hard to hear uh some of the things that you brought up to my attention because it's like man like like you said like how does my faith not shadow because part of my faith rests on this this mentorship i had with this man you know i i i thought this dude was so cool you know and i'm hearing some things i'm just like uh that that stings. So right, um, it was it was very shocking. I I was like late to work a couple of days, mm-hmm. and I, I hate Grace, but it was just like I just this was like like I couldn't. I like resolves, and I just didn't have a resolve with this ex ministry thing. I just felt very uh, hurt, you know. Especially you know all the money I put it in. I was playing, but yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then I heard the hundred million dollars. That was crazy. Kirk, yeah. You never talked about your experience at ABC. I know you went to some recordings at ABC. So how was it? Did you experience the same treatment as others? No, he and I was there. He was like, Kurt, you know, shake me up, make me hype me up, made me feel like I was like, G Greg is hyping me up. Like I'm trying to hype you up. That's my man. So I don't know. He always made me feel very special. So so that's another reason why. I kind of like excuse some of his uh, unbiblical uh, statements and his bias and his opinion. I was like, well, that's my man. So, so, and then I had to repent because I idolize this man because it, it is idolatry when the Bible says this thing, man says this thing, you choose man over the word of God. That's idolatry. And I had that revelation. I was in denial for so long because I heard other people repent of their idolatry with EX ministry. And I was like, okay, they can't repent. I'm good. Cause I, I, I don't I don't, I don't worship man. I'm good. Yeah. But I really had to get to grip with it and be like, yeah, I did. I idolized him because he was saying some stuff that wasn't right. And mm-hmm. I, I I went with it over the word of God. So that wasn't right. Robert Robinson asked the question, "What is the Rice Experiment?" I, I'm not a, I'm not aware of the Rice Experiment, but maybe you or uh, Sean can describe. Uh, or listen oh, to I love this! Yeah. You know, the Rice Experiment is awesome. Me and my mother did it. 
Um, uh, you, you, you put rice into the jars, right? And you put water in the jars with the rice and you cover it with a lid and you speak over the rice for like 30 days and it's supposed to change. Uh, for one, you do three different jars, okay? One, one of the jars, you speak positivity over it. You say you're good, you, you're awesome. <laughs> the second one, you speak negatively over it. You say you're dumb, you're stupid, I hate you. And in the third rice, the third uh, jar, you don't do anything with, right? So uh, we took pictures of the rice every day. We kept saying it, and it did not work three days. I did it to like 80 days, and it did not work. So I, I gave up on it. I was like, okay, well, the Japanese dude on the video, he worked it, but mine didn't work. So I put it in the shoebox, and I put it in my closet. I returned to the shoebox months later. I opened it up, and I saw the negative, because we labeled it negativity. And the one that we had labeled negativity, I held up and it was black and the one that we have labeled love i held it up and it was white and i was like wow it worked it just took longer to manifest so our words do have power and i was like so blown away by that experiment yeah that jump you go on youtube type in uh dr uh uh amoto i think his name is uh, it's dr amoto rice experiment and you'll see it, it it's dope it's dope and I'm, let me just say this as well because I'm, I'm gonna take a different take on that um, the Bible says life and death and the power of the tongue. I think we need to execute that in this, according to its context, because uh, when, when the Proverbs mentions that, it's not talking about creative power. Uh, it, it is talking about what James refers to in the power of the tongue, how we are able to bless and how we're able to curse others or you know tear down. Um, when, we, when we get into this realm of thinking that we have the same power over our words, as Jesus or as God, Holy Spirit says, then we need to start reading Lamentations 3, uh, 38 and 39. As a matter of fact, let me just read that uh, so that way we can have uh, some biblical context to that because I, I don't want people to think, number one, I, I don't deny miracles. I don't deny miracles. I'm not saying that. Uh, but miracles are not are not the norm. If they were norm, if they were the norm, then they would be called regulars. I think Chuck Swindoll said that one day. You know, if we if we if, 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 if we see a miracle every single day, then it's not a miracle. I mean, it, but but God is a miracle working <laughs> God. You know what I'm saying? But we, we need to be very careful uh, and, and and thinking that we have this 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 creative power to speak over things and it and, and it appears, or to speak over things and it and it, and it happens. So let me just read uh, Lamentations chapter three, verse thirty seven. And this is this is this is the word of the Lord. Who is there who speaks and it comes to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Lord that both good and ill uh, go forth? So now when we when we read that, then we need to go to Romans 3. Uh, Romans 2, because I've heard people like Ivy here say this, we have the God kind of faith. Stop right there. God doesn't have faith. Okay. God doesn't have faith. He's God. He don't need faith. Faith in what? What does God need faith for? He's the one who gives faith. Faith is a gift. Faith is based on what God uh, gives to gives to gives to mankind. Verse uh, uh, verse uh, chapter four excuse me, of Romans. Chapter four uh, of, of Romans. And I'm just going to scroll down to verse seventeen. This is talking about Abraham being the, the being the, having the faith that Abraham Abraham uh, had. Uh, verse 17, it says, as it is written, the father of many nations have I made you in the sight of him, that is God, whom he believed, that is Abraham, even God, notice, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. So that is what, that is what God is the one who speaks and it comes to pass. God is the one who has creative power. We know that in Genesis, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Earth was formless and void, and God said. And so when God said it, then it became. So can these things happen like the rice experiment? Not, not, not knocking that, not discrediting that. But I will say this. Uh, Paul talks about false signs and wonders. Uh, we know Janus and Jamboree's, uh, when they stood against Moses. Moses had his staff. They had their staff. Moses threw his staff down, it became a snake. They threw their staff down, it became a snake as well too. But what happened? 
Moses is the snake uh, swallowed up the other uh, snakes, the other vipers. So just because something happens, that's all I'm saying. Just because something happens and it, and it appears and it comes to pass or it's true, does not always make it to be number one of God and does not always make it to be that that person is sent by God. We need to be very careful with that. I think also, let me just add this other point. Um, in, in Luke's gospel, I'll just turn there for a second. I just want to give some, I just want to give everybody some context here because I don't want people to start chasing miracles. We don't, we do not want to be doing that. Um, because you get you get into that into that mode, then you're basically going to set yourself up for all kinds of uh all kinds of problems. So uh what do I want to go? Let me think. Let me think. Yeah. Luke uh chapter 16, the rich man and Lazarus. Both men die. Uh, Lazarus is, is, is in the bosom of Abraham. A rich man finds himself, the Bible says, is, is, is in hell. Um, but notice this place, Hades, is a, is, a, is a place of conscientious torment. So for those of you who may think, those who may be watching this video, who will watch this video later, uh, first of all, hello. Uh, second of all, if you're not saved, uh, there won't be any party if you die without Christ. Thinking that you know you're gonna be down in, in hell partying with Elvis and with Pac and with Biggie and with old dirty bastard and all them kind of cats, you know, y'all gonna be having a good time. And no, 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 that's that's it's gonna be a place of conscientious torment. And so uh the text says, I read in verse in verse uh 23, and in Hades, this is the rich man, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And, the, and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received your good things and likewise Lazarus bad things, but now he's being comforted to hear and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great chasm fixed in order that those who wish to come over from here to you may not be able and that none will be able to cross over from there to us. Then he, that is the rich man, says, Then I beg you, Father, that you may send him to my father's house. He said, that you may send him to my father's house, rather. And he says, for I have five brothers that he may warn them. He's talking about the rich man telling, telling Lazarus, let them go back and warn my, my family, my kinfolk. And he says, because lest they also come to this place of torment. If they don't repent, this is where they're going to end up. Verse 29 says, but Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Notice what Moses says. I mean, notice what, notice what Abraham says. He says, they have the law. They have the word of God. In that, time, in that context, since the New Testament wasn't complete, they have the word of God. So God says, you got the word. You don't, you don't need uh, somebody coming from the dead to tell you about, about whether or not hell or suffering from not turning and trusting in Christ for your sin is real. But notice what he says. He says, he says, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, the, the rich man says, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, this is Abraham saying to, to the rich man, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. All I'm saying is this, ladies and gentlemen. The word of God, what we have here in our hands right now, this book, that book that Brother Curtis has, that trumps, that takes more precedence and authority over any rice experiment, any any sign, any wonder, any miracle, it is the word of God. If you do not believe the word of God, God says, me giving you a miracle, me bringing somebody back from the dead, ain't going to convince you. If anything, it will do more to damn you. But you have the word of God. It is the sufficiency of scripture that saves and convinces a man of his sin, not somebody's miracle, not somebody's rice in a jar. So I wanted to just you know be clear uh, with that. But here's another question, though, too. Um, um, did you, did you have a comment about anything I say so far? Uh, gotta um, maybe change my audio to uh, Bluetooth or switch back to my okay. laptop because it's like <laughs> staticky. 
Okay, try it again. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah do what you need to do. That's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and set up another question here because there's some people are asking some more questions here. Uh, let's see. Okay. And let me know when you're ready. And, uh, and hopefully everybody else can hear me okay. Uh, I think so. Okay. So here's the next question. Okay, cool. That's the problem. Okay. And I'll set the question up here that's on the screen. This is from uh, uh, Akamai. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I don't like messing with people's messing up people's name. So I hope I'm saying it correctly. And if not, please forgive me. Uh, Akamai, she says this. What does your dad, another man, think about him? Can't hear you. Mm -mm. Can't hear you. Try it again. Okay. Still can't hear you. Okay, there you go. There you go. Try it again. Hello? Yep. Oh, uh, still no. You're nothing now. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, now we just lost one. So maybe he'll come back up, uh, up again. I don't know what is going on with these streams. But everybody can hear me fine, and everybody can see me fine. So hopefully he'll, he'll come back on in just a minute because I wanted to uh, get these questions uh, these questions out here and answer them. Okay, let's see. He's coming back on. Let's see if I can get a picture of him. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. All right. Cool. Can you hear me? It's a little staticky, but it's, I can't hear you, though. It's, it's my Okay, good. Uh, All right. I think it's on your end, bro. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, can you see the question? What, what is, think about think about what does my dad think about G. Craig Lewis? Yes. Uh, I think he. I mean, he was more so checking on me when I was telling him, uh, you know, that the things I discovered about the ministry. He just was like concerned for for me. It's like, dang, like I'm sorry that you know this happened, type of stuff. But he never. I mean, he my dad never was really big into. G. Craig, like I was. I mean, he was. He was like, yeah, G. Craig got the truth, but my dad wasn't like as emphatic <laughs> as I was about the ministry. So I think I think my dad is cool. About and and actually, uh, I just got the question. Remember, I was telling you about the story about the sister who whose work George stole. Is she? She's right here, Rochelle Laval. He stole oh. my work from my book, and he turned around and said, "God does not reveal things to women." It was uh, Sister Rochelle Laveau. Yes, I'm glad she came in because I knew I knew I knew I had spoke with her. I just couldn't remember the name, but yeah, stole her work, bro. Took her took her writings, her information, used it for his own, and said that God don't speak to women. Wow. Yeah, that's so not that's not. Yes, cool. she's one of the ones that uh that said that. Let me see if there's any other questions so far. Uh, let's see. Oh, he, he makes uh, it seem as though. There are no prophetesses in the Bible, but I recall in the book of Luke, there was a prophetess. Uh, the word prophet is in the Bible. The word prophetess is also in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And God can speak to a woman as he can speak to a man, according to the scripture, but not according to G. Craig, it seems. Yeah. And I think even with that, you know, it's, it's how we it's how we use those terms. But I, again, I'm not I, I, I do believe that God uses women. Uh, and since his, his view of women is, is so degrading uh, and so demeaning, I mean, he, he's even gone out and said that women are basically just used for sex. They're, they're only good for sex. You want, he said, you want to know what your purpose is as a woman? Look at yourself in the mirror, naked, and there's your answer. That's what he said about women made in the image and likeness of God, uh, that they're only used as sex tools. And that's no different than, that's no different than, than the slave trade. So that's all we we'll use for then was 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 sex sex tools even in the in the, in the first century that's why Paul and, and and Peter had to tell these new believers how to treat their wives because they was they was affected by a a a, a uh, wicked culture and they did not value women did not appreciate women and and so Peter particularly says look if you want your prayers heard you better treat your wife right because if you don't you're not getting anything from God. So his his attitude toward women, man, is is, is deplorable. 
uh, very, uh, very disrespectful. Uh, let me see. Uh, someone, I think, had another question here. Uh, make sure I got all the questions read here. Uh, I think that was it. Yeah, I think that's all the questions so far. Anybody, anyone else have any questions? Feel free to, to put them up in the uh, in the chat, and I'll I'll post them here in the uh, in the live as well. Go ahead, brother. What well, to answer your first question? You was like, you know, how did you not, you know, your faith or whatever? How are you still, you know, okay or whatever? Um, I don't believe I fully answered that, but the truth is, uh, your videos um, kind of. It was kind of like a replacement for G. Craig because um, <laughs> you, I like somebody who like uses the Bible a lot. And G. Craig, he'll go through a lot of scriptures. He don't just be talking. He does, you know, use the Bible. He don't flip. You don't see a Bible in his hand like ever. But he he does go through some scripture and have profound insights into the into the Word of God. And when I went on your your page and I saw your interviews and I saw how frequently you use the Bible. It was refreshing because I didn't just lose uh, uh, like a elder brother in the faith and just be without. I like I gained one at the same time, and I can put on your uh, wall. I was like, like hey, everybody, the people I had tagged to go to um, Los Angeles to see the Chupan Hip Hop Part Thirteen was uh, Akame. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Senegal. Uh, I know this is my Facebook friend, but I don't even know if I'm saying her name right. But I tagged her in there too. Now, hey, everybody, let's all go to eat the Chupan Heart 13. And now that that's not happening, I put on your wall. I said, hey, let's go eat a wood, present the word. Because uh, he got some good word and I would be inclined to hear from him because he got that tenacity. And he he cracked, he'd be cracking me up too. Because G Craig Lewis is hilarious, you know. So you get some good word and you get some comedy too. And you had some jokes too. And I was like, hey, well, at least I'm not totally without. I got a brother here who's funny. <laughs> and he, you know, he's comical. He got some good word. I, I'm good with him. You know, let's go to let's go to Crenshaw and let's see Seiko Woods. I'm good. So it, it was uh part of it was I, I got a replacement. I got I got some I got some help. I did, I just wasn't out. I got some support from I believe that G Craig. Say it again. And praise the God for do, do you believe that G Craig? Uh, preach the gospel now, or did, did he ever preach the gospel? I mean, it's, yeah, if, you, if you, I mean, if you panned his, if you panned his entire ministry, because uh, and I'm just asking because I, because I didn't really, I didn't really listen to his stuff until until recently. I, I've had his, I've had some of his DVDs, but it was only for research purposes because I knew that he was saying wasn't really my cup of tea. But what? Uh, can you recall him ever preaching a gospel message or ever walking through uh, a book of the Bible, expository preaching, uh, you know, verse by verse preaching? Nah, he, I mean, if he's like trying to make a point on his era of man three, he, uh, he went to uh, the book of judges and he, he kind of went through several verses to make a point about Deborah at being like a real prophetess, but he didn't. Um, it wasn't just like one scripture; it was like a passage. Mm -hmm. So he has he'll go through a little bit sometimes, but not not often. So would you consider him to be an expositor? Nah. Okay. Uh, so can't recall him preaching the gospel. <laughs> can't recall him uh, being an expositor of scripture. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> I'm trying to see what else, because because how how would he qualify as a pastor if he's not doing pastor stuff? Right. You, you, follow my, you follow my point. So how how would he how how is he able to to teach people the word of God when he's not teaching the word of God? And I'm talking about as we see in the scriptures, as we see Jesus. I mean, when Jesus and 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 when Jesus in, in uh, Luke four, uh, he goes into the synagogue. He opens up the he opens up the book. He opens up the scroll and points right to Isaiah and reads from Isaiah. So we have the master teacher himself showing us how we are to to teach the word of God. I mean, from the old to new to new 
Testament. We got Ezra. I mean, Ezra, the Bible says that he was an expositor. He, he gave the sense of the text, the Bible says. So it, it seems to me um, this, this man has, has, has got his start or made his, got his niche um, in, in, in the issue of hip hop and basically has carried that thing kind of like what uh, Kind of like what Lee Major said in his in his uh in his this trailer to him uh, called ABC. I encourage everybody to go listen to it if you haven't already. But he says, "How many? I mean, how many two behind hip hops is it going to be? I mean, it's like, dude, you're going to ride this thing to the wheels fall. There ain't no more wheels. The car. I mean, you you, you ride it on on rim on the rim now. Matter of fact, the rims are gone. You ride it on the on the brakes. So how how can we how can we say that this man is a, is it was a faithful man of God?" When he did not teach the people of God, uh, and these are people in, in the chat room, uh, people in the chat room have, have said they have never heard expository preaching from this man, and they were members there. So it's like, how, how did how is it that he can preach, but he's not preaching the Bible? If, if I'm making if I'm making any sense with that, right? Yeah. Um... I guess in my in the back of my mind, I always gave it a pass because I thought it was assumed that we mm. these are people who've already come to Christ. So mm. he's just helping us in this. It's like okay, he's helping us how to uh, he's helping us how to um, conquer temptation. He had a temptation series and he helped, he helped name the temptation, and mm. we'll, we'll just go there. He's teaching us this week, he's teaching us um, discipline. He's teaching us on fasting. He's teaching us on offering. So he teaches us different aspects of Christianity. And I guess in backed up on of my mind, I'm like, he's assuming that we've already got the foundations. So I guess we're good. Mm. Um, I guess, yeah, I get on that stuff. But it would be refreshing to have some uh, some people led to the cross. Yeah. <laughs> At the yeah, yeah, yeah but more than the refreshing, regenerating and life changing, to be, to be honest with you. Uh, our sister Lavina said this, how did it make you feel as a single brother what he said about brothers who are not married are whack and trash? And trash. <laughs> yeah. they, it, it, it was like, I was kind of like, where's he getting this from? Um, kind of stuff. And then I kind of like tried to uh, be who, who I'm not um, with different people trying to uh, I remember one time I was um, courting this young lady and I emailed uh, G. Craig Lewis and I was like, well, it didn't work out, but you know, at least I tried. <laughs> and I put, it was like this long email. And he replied something small, like, okay, whatever, or something. He didn't like trash me down, but he, uh, he like replied something short. He didn't really give me much to go on. Mm -hmm. And then I remember going to him in person. I think the last time, no, the second before last time I saw him, uh, I was I was at the uh, one of the one of the his recordings and he was like when are we gonna find Curtis a wife and um, he like always that always his thing anytime I'd be like yeah man you, we need to get you with somebody type of thing like it was like huge and heavy like it was the most important thing mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really know what to do with that I'm like okay um, I don't know. Like, like I, I not, not like I wasn't trying. It just wasn't working out, you know. And I didn't want to just be in a relationship with somebody just because he said. It. And then yeah. this girl like wrecked me because I was uh, the couple of females I was talking to. It was just terrible, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I'm not just gonna marry this girl and just be miserable just because she Craig wants me to. <laughs> so then that kind of ties into what Dale Best had said earlier. Um, did, did, you did you read his testimony, Dale Best? Yes, that what was heavy. Was, what were your thoughts and, about and, and out the church? Say it again. What were your thoughts about what is what he said in his testimony, Dale? I I I, I just got I, I got offended, and I was just like, you know, how how you gonna get this man one year? to be married or you're going to put him out the church because he's single for too long. Like that's preference and you're making a precept and that's not, that's not fair. That's not Bible. I just very, I just was like, man, this is not cool. Um, but I can definitely see, I mean, he, he talks about it all the time and he just, he, he's imbalanced. 
He's just inbound. And then I, I would prefer, I was talking to my brother about D. Craig Lewis too. And I, and my, just about my brother, I would much rather D. Craig had said, hey, uh, single brother, seek the Lord who your wife is. But he, D. Craig don't say that. You know what D. Craig says? He says, show the girls your Mac. Where your Mac at? Go show them the Mac. And I'm like, all right, that's fleshly, that's carnal, that's worldly, that's that's right. me, that's selfish. If I get a girl on my own power, my marriage might end in divorce. I want to seek the Lord who I should marry. Right. So, but he never said you can't find that in any like recording. Like, hey, brothers, like uh pray to the Lord and try to see if God will direct you to your spouse. Like he don't be saying that. He'd be like, get the Mac, I get the Mac and get the girl. And I like I don't want my Mac to uh, attract a, a female. I want God to what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But if God didn't join together, then I don't want it. Yeah. Um, uh, Lamar Wiley, he made this he made this uh, statement. He says, "I was going to say this for my email to you, but I believe at one time he did expository teaching. But after the move and name change, he left that form of preaching and transitioned it to what what he what he does today." I'm referencing his Dream World series that you can't find anywhere now unless you already have them somewhere. Uh, thanks, Lamar. I appreciate that. Um, that's He's interesting. Right. That you that. That's mentioned that yesterday. Can we can we talk about that whole ABC thing if you don't mind? Because I think you kind of like you know uh, broke it down a little bit more in one of a, one of my uh, uh, threads regarding because I had put up a post about how it's it's strange and funny how G. Craig would uh, lambast. Uh, the cray for taking uh taking the christian out of christian rapper but he takes church out of abc which when, when it once was uh when it once was arlington bible church and now he says it's adam and believer so i know if you wanted to kind of like you know explain that a little bit yes that's true uh yeah that 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 comment was true well what what that brother or whoever you put on the comment with the uh, dream world. I do remember that dream world um, uh, series and it is gone. He will delete stuff, podcasts, and you can't find it no more, but I have it on my old iPod somewhere and I can pull it up again. And uh, I believe that there was a change in his ministry um, years ago because he, he, he would do some, some things differently than he's doing now. And I don't know what, what happened to him, but it's, it's just, it's different. Um, and then the the Lecrae thing, um, yeah, it's 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 hypocritical. I think it's hypocritical. The point that you made. Um, Renee's Carter, I mean Renee's Garner said, "Do you remember him saying that the Illuminati controls everything, and you can only make a certain amount of money apart from them?" So he's a part of it. So I keep saying this, but this is important because he said it out of his own mouth, and even said this about others such as gospel artists and hip hop. So did he get the call? What do you believe about that? Now, my brother, my little brother uh, had this theory. Um, now, the Marilyn Monroe uh, DVD, or not the DVD, I'm like making it something that is not. <laughs> the, Mar <laughs> the Marilyn Monroe uh, effect, uh, effect uh, video that you put on, um, I, uh, my little brother saw it and he was like, wow, what the OTO got him? Because uh, G. Craig has talked about the Illuminati, the OTO secret societies, like in his old part five, part six uh, videos. And uh, my brother was like, what if the Illuminati, like this lady saying, kind of like made him hush for the money. And he had to um, do this thing with this female. And they got dirt on him in order for him to be up. Like, or they will like kill his family or something like that. Because of like the these secret societies be doing stuff like that. In which case, um, you still don't be, you know, fooling with, you know, secret society. So he, that still doesn't give him a pass. But it was right. interesting that my brother would say that. And um, with this young lady saying too, I, I doubt that he's with them. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that, that, that he's with that. But he did say like, uh, like everything is Satan and everything. So he kind of makes you feel like you can't, you know, do nothing in this world because everything's the devil. Wow. Um, let's see. I think someone had a question. Robinson Rice said, uh, is it that he is a man who pastors teaching the word of God or simply just a man who found a niche to make money and uses the Bible to grow followers under the guise of it being a church? I would probably say that the latter, Robinson. Here's the reason why I would say the latter for myself, based on my observation, based on the, on the scriptures, because 
just recently, I'm not sure if you remember this or even you recall this, um, Kurt, but they just started doing baptisms. They just started doing baptisms. The church has been in existence for almost eight years. And now they just started, they just did their first baptism in October. His reason for doing it, number one, he, didn't, he doesn't believe in baptisms. He doesn't believe in baptism. He said that baptisms uh, had their roots in Roman Catholicism. Not rooted in scripture, <laughs> but Roman Catholicism. He said baptism is rooted in But then he said uh, he wanted to make sure, he wanted to make sure that he was doing it correctly. So now let me make sure I understand this. So you're not sure how to baptize a person, but you're sure how to start a church that, that is made up of believers and some who are new believers that are supposed to be baptized. So you're not sure about that. And, and here's, a, here's another interesting observation and irony, I believe. Um, God always speaks to Craig. Now, just follow this for a second, Kirk. Craig always said that God told me, God told me, God told me. God told me, God told me. You know, I was laying in my bed and, and God just spoke to me. God just spoke to me. So I'm saying, uh, bro, um, God didn't speak to you about baptizing believers? You, you, God ain't, God ain't never said nothing to you about that. So, so the, so the, so the, the, the line has just been, 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 been dead on, on you as a quote unquote pastor helping new believers or those who have yet to be baptized to be baptized. How hard is it to take a person who has professed faith in Christ, put them under the water, signifying their, 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 their the way that Christ went under his death, coming back up in newness of life, testifying publicly that you have now been made anew in Christ by your public profession of faith. That's all baptism is. So how deep is that and how hard is that to do? Well, see, the interesting thing about, about this is, is that when you when you teach people, and I'm not sure if you remember me saying this, because if you saw any of my videos, when you teach people that demons can be drowned, that demons can be drowned when you when a, when a Christian goes under, under the water, so do the demons. And so now when, when, when they go down, so do the demons get drowned as well, too. What do you find out in scripture? See, those kind of things, when it goes unchecked, and then you have people who, who are in this church who don't uh, practice what the Bereans did in Acts 17 11, it goes right over people's head. It goes unchecked and unchallenged. So I didn't know if you wanted to respond to that, but it's those kinds of teachings that I'm saying that, you know, what makes this man not a biblical pastor. Uh, he's not even qualified to uh, to teach the word of God because he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have definitely, I did hear that word about the sermon that he preached and I have heard him say what he said about uh the Nephilim going under with the mm -hmm. and so now the Nephilim and all that. He said that in one of his videos, and he also re repeated it on that uh, true church perspective. Um, the thing about that is, if he, I would have had more respect for that sermon had he be led it with Romans six, like like it's supposed to be led. I think when you talk about baptism, like where's Romans six at? Because that's I think the baptism chapter. Um, uh, you know, more verses like that, that, that really talk about what's going on when we get baptized and then maybe throw your little, uh, <laughs> your little Bible study that you found and you, your little correlations of water and you try to tie that into it and then maybe add that, but the foundation should be what the foundation should be. So uh, yeah, I think he was off and I don't know, I, it, it took, it didn't take way too long for him to start baptizing people. That was that was crazy. I mean, bottom line, I was disobedience. I was, I was just basically in sin. You were in sin. You didn't do what God's word. The the, the very outside of a of a of a, a sinner repenting, right, and turning to Christ for salvation. The the, the 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 next commandment is then for them to be baptized. That's it. Once a Christian becomes saved, their next commandment is to be baptized. I mean, this is this is why the Ethiopian eunuch. <laughs> This is why he in, 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 Acts, in Acts, uh, Acts 10, he goes and says, well, wait a minute. Um, I mean, Acts 8, he goes and says, uh, what prevents me from being, 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 being baptized? Because he understood 
that before I can be baptized, I need to do something. And, and, and all, all Philip told him was, believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. And that's what it was. So now this man has all these people, 300 people go in who have never been baptized, <laughs> sitting in a church. He teaches that baptism drowns demons. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you help people understand what, what biblical baptism is when you're coming off with this sensationalism and you don't have any scripture to back it up? But then when you try to back it up with scripture, you, you misinterpret. You just, you just twist the scriptures to your own, to your own you know, destruction, the word of God says. So, and, and like Sean said, it's not that hard. It, it, it really is not that hard, Sean. Amen. It's not that hard. The word of God is clear. It, it really is. It's, it's crystal clear. It's crystal clear. So um, I, I think this is where the problem comes. How, how do you help people like yourself, right? How do you help people like yourself who, are, who, who may watch this video, and I know they will, who watched this video, saw the DVDs as you were, and, uh, uh, but, they're, 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 but they're not sure yet. They still have some doubt. They may, they may look at you as now being the hater. I know they are looking at me as being the hater. Me just, just trying to tear down somebody. So that's that's a given. But but here you come, right? Here come Kurt talking about, man, he got all these DVDs, and now he up here, you know, he probably just hurt. He, you know, because that's what, that's what Craig says. You know, people just hurt. You know, they just need to let, let things go. Yeah, he may have said that you were trash and all, but can't you just let it go, Kurt? Can't you know because you're single, so then you're you're qualified as trash now. You're still single, you're not married. So how would you how would you help people that are kind of like on the fence? They're not really sure about what to do. <clears throat> I would uh like book chapter verse them because uh one thing I think the, the blessing of this all, the blessing of all this is that. A lot of people, I would say most people who follow EX Ministries are people who are not really like carnal Christians who like go out and do go club and do all that other kind of stuff. So these are people who kind of like are passionate for the things of God. So people mm -hmm. like that, it's easier for them to make the switch and be like, I'm going to follow uh, the true cross and what the true of the scriptures are. Um, because up until recently, G. Craig Lewis was very, very Bible. I don't know where he got all this ideology and his own notions uh, of pushing it as gospel from recently. But early on, I mean, the dude was like, he used to, it used to be very, very Bible. It used to be very, very hard to disagree with him holding the Bible because everything pretty much he said was in the Bible like a long time ago. But I, I don't know what happened. But for those people who are like, you know, uh, in, abc or who are still following ex ministries i just take uh the word of god i would take i i personally would take first corinthians chapter 13 the first two verses and read what love is <laughs> and then uh base that on how he's treated some of these other people these testimonies and just be like the two just don't they don't go mm -hmm. like it there's no love in what this man is doing so how can we follow this that doesn't have the love I would probably, I would probably just say, I would probably slightly um, augment what you what you said about him starting off being biblical. I don't believe G. Craig Lewis was biblical from the from the beginning. Here's the reason why I'm saying that: because how you view the church, how you view the church, is going to determine how you see God's people. So, who was G. Craig ever accountable to? Uh, he had he had no biblical leadership starting out, and he still does not today. He is not accountable to anybody. He never had been. You 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 can see that when people would disagree with him and ask him sincere questions. What he would what would he do? He'll block them. He'll delete them. He'll call him a Jesse. Call him a demon. I mean, you know, even early on, T. Tom Moffat was basically G. Craig's enforcer. You know, when somebody would say something publicly about about G. Craig. T. Tom Moffat would basically be the person that would be the spokesman, would be the defender, would be the right hand man, and would be kind of like be the buffer. So this is not, this is not, um, this has never been a biblical uh, man of God. Never. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm basing it on facts. I'm not basing it on feeling because, see, I'm on the outside. I'm on the outside and I'm, I'm, I'm objectively seeing it. So when I look at, when I look at, when I understand the doctrine of, of, of ecclesiology, the doctrine of the, of the church, and understand that accountability and, 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 and structure of leadership 
must be in place from the scriptures and it's not done like that, then you're setting yourself up for what we see today. Because if he was under a biblical accountability, half of the stuff that we see right now going on, if not most of it, like he says, 90 percent of what I put in that email was fabricated. Only 10 percent is true. I'm still waiting, Curtis, on that 10 percent that he's proven that was that was uh, true. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody's waiting on that 10 percent, that you know, because if you're saying 10 percent of what I said about you is true. But it was dealt with. Number one, I'm still putting the question out there. What of that 10 percent was true? Number two, what are that 10 percent that you're saying was dealt with? Because we already have the testimonies of, 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 of women, and particularly one who confessed on Facebook, Kurt, confessed on Facebook that there was there was a sexual relationship that went on. So 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 and, and you were and you were married, you were married at the time, uh, uh, George. So how are you still being a pastor? So it's just so many things that is. And, and these are things that was going on while these videos that you have. He was doing this stuff. So so the whole Romans two, you were mentioned about hypocrisy earlier. Uh, the whole Romans two, 17 to 21. You who say thou shalt not steal, do you steal? You who say thou commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who say, do you do this? Do you? I mean, so you're doing all the very things that you're condemning other people of doing, and it goes unchecked. So that's why I would say, um, you know, how, how would you help a person, man? You know, that's that's on the fence that have that have seen the stuff that you're seeing now, but they're not sure. What would you What would you say? To those to those people like yourself. I mean, you you, you was in it for 14 years, man. You, even though you went out an ABC member, you might as well say that you kind of was because you basically went there when he had the, 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 the tapings and things like that. And you 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 met him a couple of times. But what would you say to people who are currently at ABC who are supporters of his ministry right now? What would you say to those people? Yeah, I I I a guy who's there and I've I've uh, forwarded him the E to try to get him to see. And I was like, um, bro, like Pastor G looks guilty because the thing that one of the things that really convinced me that you were legit is because you said that the Tupac Hip Hop Part 13 would be canceled prior to G. Craig saying that it would be canceled. So they gave you credibility in my eyes, in my view. Also, T Time Moffat bringing you on also gave you credibility. Also, Timothy. The Meekins, uh, G. Craig Lewis's cousin, said that his mother had a prophecy to her that somebody in your description, G. Craig Lewis, down. And I'm just, I just see so many clues and so many red flags are just going up. It's just like, unless you're just like uh, idolizing this man and just blinded completely, then you you won't get out of this. Um, so. Uh, I, you just got to be real with yourself and just be like, hey, man, uh, no idols before the Lord, God only. You'll come out. You'll come out. I, I sent the dude the, uh, I sent the dude your thing, and he 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 gave me some he, uh, reply like, um, I'm trying to get the blood out my ears. Are you familiar with G. Craig's uh, saying when he's get the blood out your ears? No. Nope. No? Okay. So that comes from one of his sermons, and I, I caught what he was saying. Um, that's okay. One of, one of G. Craig. Like people who like really follow uh yeah. his ministry, they know like the ears is um uh, when people are like basically uh saying things that are negative okay. and you gotta keep that negativity out of here. So right. uh me going up against his it was like like that for him. And I'm like, bro, like you don't understand. Like I, I love G. Craig too, but, but we gotta get out of this joint. And I told uh one of my other boys, I sent him the stuff and he was like, Bro, I've been following this stuff since I was twelve. Like, uh, what, and it was hard for him to uh, come to grips with it. And he's still kind of like on the fence, the whole EX Ministries thing. Because he was like, like, bro, like, this is, he said, I, I, I was led to salvation behind the true behind hip hop. Like, mm -hmm. so for you to be saying these things, it's like, it, 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 it's, it turns my world upside down. So for some of these people, it is extremely hard and we need some prayer. But uh, folks got to be real with themselves. And if they love God and they love Jesus as much as they say they do, they'll find and screw the error in G. Craig Lewis's teachings. Amen. What would you say to G. Craig if you had a chance to speak to, to, to speak to him? How would I speak to who? What would you say to G. Craig if you were to speak with him? 
Dang the um the audio. All right, say, say it one more time. Sorry. Yeah, say, yeah. What would you say to G. Craig if you were to see him? Oh, okay. What would I say? I would just be like, bro, like you, you can't just be dogging out everybody who don't agree with you and blocking them and muting them uh, just because they don't agree with you. Like as much as he, and then one of the brothers from your uh, friends list, I recently became friends, but he said that Eddie Long thing. And mm -hmm. speaking of Eddie Long, I used to go to Eddie Long's Academy when I was, was in Georgia when I was uh, seven years old. He had a Christian school academy. It's called. I used to go to Bishop Eddie Long's academy back then, yeah. and I used to go to World Changes Craft for Dollar Shirt. But uh, back then, um, Eddie Eddie Long had did you know the thing with the kids or whatever. And then G. Craig Lewis was this man needs to address this. How can he not address this? Uh, the Bible says if the accusation. Or, uh, multiple against the, the elder that he needs to, you know, address it and admit it and step down. How can he not do this? And we got, and you got the same section here. We got multiple uh, people accusing uh, G. Craig and he's not addressing anything. So he's hypocritical. He chooses when he wants to be right and when he wants to be wrong. But right. I'll tell you something about Eddie. Say what you want. He he at least acknowledged with the accusations where he ain't run away and act, pretend like it didn't happen. Like G. Craig is still making sermons every Sunday, pretending like he don't know who you are, the spirit of the thing. He know the spirit of the thing is over here. He know that. He know what's going on. He on games right now. He know the spirit of the thing. Come on now. But he know he, he on games. And say what you want about Eddie Long. He, he acknowledged, he was like, people are saying these things. I don't agree with all of it. I've done some bad things, but I'm not saying what they've done. And Creflo Dollar, when he went to prison for like whipping his daughter's tail or whatever, and everybody was like, oh, what he gonna say? And he went up the next Sunday and he addressed it. He was like, I'm just trying to discipline my daughter. These are bishops at least acknowledging things. And G. Craig is not acknowledging. So I'm like, as a bishop, like you, you are disqualified. You have to at least acknowledge what's going on here because we got all these witnesses and testimonies against you. And the Bible says, hey, bro, like, you, you, you breaking the Bible right now. You you, right. you, out, of, you out of line. So right. I would tell them to please acknowledge it and stop blocking people. All right. Um, let me see. A couple more questions, then we'll wrap it up. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Dale said, some ABC members want to stay there because they uh, they they have friends now. They say the Holy Spirit ain't telling them to leave. What do you say to them? <laughs> the, Holy, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that agrees me when I hear people say the Holy Spirit ain't telling them to leave. If the Holy Spirit is the Spirit. He leads us and guides us into all truth. And I put it that way. If the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth, then why would He lead you and guide you to stay at ABC? I mean, right. that's you know, that's yeah, really I mean, the Spirit of Truth. Right. If he's a spirit of truth and he leads us and guides us into all truth, then he's not going to lead you and guide you into error and sin and to cause you and I to have our, our faith, uh, uh, you know, shaken and, and, and calling people to, to abandon the faith. That's that's what I would say to these people. So I would tell them, number one, know the difference between the Holy Spirit and your own deceitful, deceitful spirit and your feelings. Because I think that that is the that's really the issue. The Holy Spirit is, is 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 the third person of the Trinity. He's God, and God is a man that can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So God ain't telling somebody to stay at ABC when ABC is not following what what the Word of God says. That's what I would I would say uh, say to them. And if you want to add a point to that before we go to another question, so true. And you know the Bible says, uh, "Don't believe every spirit, but try the spirit." And First uh, John four one. Try Spirit, you see that that's that's not it doesn't bear the fruit of God's spirit uh, that mm -hmm. church so definitely not that's definitely not the Holy Spirit keeping you there right right because one of the fruit is love right and where the love at <laughs> you know? exactly exactly uh, somebody asked a question Renee said what do you think about the heroes what I think about who what do I think hero of the heroes oh. He rolls. I thought it was. <laughs> oh, now with this whole conspiracy thing with the Marvel and the X Men, now my brain is just like, okay, dude, that took a comic, 
I'm just like, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's comical now, but before it was, it was like hero, like I thought, who, oh, but now, um, uh, with his infatuation, Lee's Marvel, but yet he bashes Stan Lee and says that he's possessed by a head full of demons, but he's infatuated by Stan Lee's work. Right. It's like he was, like I said, he's imbalanced. Likes to choose when he's right and choose when he's wrong, and I, I just yeah. well, he never chooses when he's wrong. He's like he's never wrong, but he's never wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He never, he never misses when he's wrong by anything. Um, Sean said this. What people must understand is that it was not the truth behind hip hop message or George that saved them. It was the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you guys say uh, because of, if you guys say that any G. Craig Lewis conference or whatever, it wasn't because of Craig. Trust me, it was because of that. Uh, God can hit home runs with crooked sticks. And trust me, he's been doing that for a mighty long time. Uh, uh, and this is why Paul even says that some preach Christ out of, out of pretense, some preach Christ, preach Christ out of truth. Well, the pretense or the truth, as long as Christ is preached, I rejoice. That's in Philippians 3. He says, so uh, I, I rejoice that if they preach him, praise God for it. But but it's because a person uh, says things that are good, don't make them of God. That's the difference we need Amen. to understand and differentiate. Amen. A person can say a lot of good things. A person can be, listen, uh, Sean, Sean another question. Is, was the donkey saved? No, the donkey wasn't saved. And Sean is asking, and she's asking her to a question. The donkey wasn't saved. That's sure that God can use, God can use a Shrek to save anybody. God can use a Shrek to rebuke anybody, but it doesn't make Shrek saved. This means that God is sovereign over his creation. He, he, he wrote on the wall. I keep telling you all the time. God wrote on the wall to rebuke people. That don't mean we look to sheet rock revelation. Okay. We look to the word of God as our, as our basis of, uh, of authority. So we don't want to, to, uh, to tell people, uh, uh that, you know, well, we, we, we need to, you know, we need to look to, to all the good things that G Craig has done. No, no, no. That's not what the Bible says. We look, we look to what a person that their fruit by their fruit, we will know them. You, you examine the fruit. And so, like I said earlier, it wasn't Philippians three, Philippians one, whether Christ is preached in pretense or in truth, Christ is being preached. We praise God that people are being saved, but it does not, it does not uh, stop us or shouldn't stop us from calling out sin, exposing error, exposing uh, heresy, drawing people, asking God to draw people out through what we're doing uh, here today. So I, I, I definitely appreciate what the Lord is allowing to happen here because you know, it's it's um, it's really I believe it's helpful to a lot of people that may be on the fence uh, with that. What one more question, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up. Maybe get a run. Renisa asked this question: "Say, what did his ministry birth in you and prepare you for manhood and marriage? What have you learned uh, that it will prepare you for manhood and marriage? List uh, what you've learned from him for marriage and manhood. Make that quick. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> oh, his wow. birthed in me that." Me from nah, nothing. My my uh, father and my mother's relationship has prepared me for who my bride may be. Now. Say that, bro. Say that. Uh, Thank, you, Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Sister Pat says, "How are you detoxing, brother? And are you attending the Sound Church?" Wow, that's a that's a tough one. No, uh, honestly, no. I'm not attending a sound church and mm -hmm. detoxing. Um, I got, I got, I got some good work from Brother Seiko. So that without him, it would be, uh, it would be like, you know, with my, you know, uh, edification, my spirit kind of. I credit uh, a lot of uh, my spiritual maturity, me getting fed in the spirit to um, Brother Seiko when he. And let me and, and let me say that, and I, and I appreciate that, brother. Uh, but I, I will say this, and I and I and I appreciate that I received the spirit and how you said it. But I want I want to put this on record uh, right now for everybody. Um, I am I am nothing more than what y'all are, just a vessel. That's it. God uses His people to bless His people. So although I appreciate the support and I appreciate the love and I appreciate the. Uh, the, the, you know, the gracious and encouraging words. I don't want people to look to me as being anything. And here's the reason why I'm saying that, because that's how idolatry starts. Okay. 
Uh, that, that's how if we, yeah. if we look to one person, we look to one person as being the sole basis of of our spiritual growth, maturity, development. Then what we're doing, we just eclipsed God and made man God. Now, again, I'm not saying that we are not to appreciate people, but we're never to adulate them. We're never to put them in a place or position where now we see them. And now we see them as our God because this this is how people get depressed. This is why we're having this whole these whole you know, video interviews and stuff, right? It's because what one person does, we gravitate to it. We gravitate to it. And then when they act a fool and, and go nuts on us, oh Lord, I mean, this person, God says, I never put them in there for you to do that. I never placed man in your life for you to follow them. Paul says this. This is what Paul says. First Corinthians 11, 1. Follow me as I follow Christ. Right? Is that not what the Bible says? The Bible says, Paul says, follow me as, as I follow Christ. So here's, 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 the, here's the presupposition. If I'm not following Christ, you don't follow me. If I'm not opening up this word and I'm not breaking it down, if I'm not doing that, you don't follow me. If I'm not if I'm not being an example, as he tells the Philippians to follow, he says, mark those who who follow in our example. If you're not having biblical followers, then you're having blind followers. You can't have both. OK, you cannot have both. You may try, but you're going to fail. This is why Jesus himself says in Matthew, he says in Matthew 15, I believe he says, these, these, these Pharisees that's getting mad because of what I'm telling them, he says, leave them alone. He says, because they're blind guides of the blind. He says, if a blind man follows another blind man, he says, both will fall into a ditch. You don't follow somebody because of charisma. You follow somebody because of Christ likeness. That's how you follow them. And too many people are getting, are getting swept away, getting, getting their feelings uh, wrecked, because they followed man, and this is what God is showing us now. You don't follow man. You only follow man when they're following the Messiah. You're only following those who follow Christ. So this is what I want to read. And we'll wrap it up here, bro. I didn't want to take it too long. You know, sometimes as a preacher, you know, we say, as I take my seat, we ain't sat down yet. Uh, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> this, is, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I said in verse one, and I, brother, could not speak to you as spiritual men, but there was men of flesh, but as the babes in Christ, I gave you milk to drink, not for uh, not solid food, for you're not able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not yet able, for you are still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly and are you not walking like mere men? And here's the reason why Paul rebukes him and says it like this. He says, here's the reason why I'm coming at y'all like this, church. He says, for when one says, I am of Paul. And another, I'm Apollo. So I, I follow G. Craig. Or I, I follow Seiko. Or I, I follow this person. Now, no, no, no. This, this is what Paul says. He says, verse five. Well, verse four, the B part. He says, are you not mere men? What then, verse five, is Apollos? And what is Paul? He gives the answer. Servants through whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to each one. Verse six says, I planted. Yeah, I'm the one that started it. I'm the one that basically initiated it. I, I got that. Okay, thank you. He says, Apollo's water, but notice, but God was causing the growth. So then, verse seven, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. We ain't all that, guys. Listen, guys, you, you, we are nothing but organized dirt. That's all we are. He says, but it's God who causes the growth. In verse eight, verse eight. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. Notice we're in the same team. We, we're, we're on the same plantation, Kurt. We're on the same plantation serving the same master. This is why I come against this whole celebrity Christian mentality. This is why I come against this whole mentality of replacing one person who may be seen in the public eye more than another person who may not be seen. This is how you get idolatry. And it's happening more so in, in our quote unquote non-charismatic reformed churches 
that I see happening in our non uh, uh, reform and charismatic churches because because a person is a MacArthur or a person is a whoever, I don't care, uh, 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 voted by, I don't, I don't care who it is. And because they come into town, some people will drop what they're doing or spend money that they wouldn't even put in the offering plate. I know I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. Some of you will spend money going to a conference, spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars going to a conference, getting books and all this other kind of stuff, but you don't put that same amount of money in the church that you're, going to, that you're getting fed every week. And I say that to our shame. So when you have, like you just did, Kurt, you, you, you showed, I got all these DVDs, right? Now we look back and we say, okay, Lord, you delivered me. You delivered me not to fall in bondage to another man, to their opinions, to their preferences being being made my precept. You, you, you delivered me. So Lord, how am I to respond? You respond this way, Lord, thank you for giving me the people that you gave in my life, but you know what? They will never, ever, ever replace you again. That should be our commitment. That should be our vow. Because the moment, the nanosecond that we start doing this stuff again, it's no guarantee. But since God says that it's impossible for his elect to be fully deceived, this is why you have the Curtises. This is why you have the Fam Johnson. This is why you have the Loretta White. This is why you have the L L L uh, L L L uh, Larnell and Lavinas. This is why you have all these people that are now coming out. Over 80 plus people, bro, that are coming out, either have been have been active members of, of G. Craig's church or have been former supporters of his church. And they're coming out and they're saying, wow, now I see. Our job is to help others, others see. That's our goal. That's our mission. So I just wanted to say that, bro. I don't know if you had any closing thoughts, any 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 uh, words you want to leave. Let people know how to contact you, uh, how they can reach out to you as well, man. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I am. Uh, you just Facebook inbox me, but my email you can email me at uh, Kurt at Kurt's dot com. That's K U R T at K U R T Z. C O O K I E S. Uh, yeah, cookies.com. Cool, cool. My phone number, hey, hey I'm, I'm, I'm reachable. 703 732 8770. 703 732 8777. I'm, I'm, I'm open. Good, good. Brother, I, I appreciate you, man, for coming on. And I, I thank you, man, that you took time out of your day before you went to work. Uh, to share your story, man. Um, you know, let's continue to stay connected. Let's continue to uh, help people come out of uh, of ABC and any other place that is not preaching and teaching and practicing the word of God, because God wants people to be free. He didn't call us to be free to be slaves of any man. He called us to be free to be slaves of him. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you, Brother Echo. Appreciate you guys, man. <laughs> Well, look, this is our, that's our, that's our uh, recording, you guys. And uh, again, thank you all for coming out. Uh, appreciate you all for uh, taking the time. Uh, again, you want to reach out to me, you can do that. Seiko was at yahoo.com. If you want to post this video on my YouTube channel, uh, if you again, you'd like to support the ministry, you can do that. Uh, support the merchandise. You want to reach out to me, inbox me on my name uh, through Facebook. I'll send you a catalog of the, uh, of the merchandise. Uh, my lovely assistant again, Nyla, will, will assist you in, in getting that order uh, processed and expedited to you. And also, if you'd like to support the ministry financially, again, you can do that through, uh, through PayPal under my name, secondworld.yahoo.com, or through Cash App uh, under my name with the dollar sign uh, before, the, uh, before the name. So, uh, got to get out of here. I got, a, I got another counseling session to do. And so, uh, again, uh, God is opening up doors of opportunity for that as well. So, again, if you want to reach out to us for, for ministry, the virtual uh, uh, virtual wisdom uh, counseling is what we're, what we're doing. Uh, just email me. We can uh, set up something with that. And we're going to be uh, also teaming up with other people to help minister to the body of Christ, those who are trying to come out of these uh, churches to find a healthy, biblically sound, balanced church. We don't want you to be spiritual vagabonds just wandering. We want you to get uh, get to a place where you can be fed, <clears throat> be nerd, the word of God. So uh, with that being said, we're going to we're done. You guys have a great Lord's Day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as you all know, you know the drill. Whether we eat, drink, or whatever we do, do all to the glory and honor of God. God bless. Amen. Amen. Peace.